<laughs> well, the Sooners are just days away from their third game of the season, back at home. And for the first time ever, they're going to play Tulane. Now, of course, the Sooners, Sooner Nation, still on a high after that big win. One of the biggest wins in recent memory for OU Nation. They've had some, they've had some big ones, and they've had a lot of them. But this one really took the cake, playing on the road against the second-ranked team in the country in Ohio State and winning and really looking good, especially in the second half. But as difficult as this might be to comprehend, the Sooners have to try to put that Buckeye victory out of their memory bank as much as possible because you have another game to get ready for. Again, that's going to be this Saturday as the Sooners wrap up the non-conference part of their schedule. For the first time ever, it's the Sooners and the Green Wave. It'll be Saturday, 5 o'clock, Oklahoma time. On pay-per-view, yep, there's always going to be one game a year that's on pay-per-view, and this is the one, $55 is a price if you want to pay to watch this thing on pay-per-view. And I've seen at least one ticket source that has tickets for this game as cheap as 30 bucks. Of course, buyer beware when it comes to that, but then again, uh, there's an option, so judge for yourself. Before we break down the Sooners and the Green Wave, of course, for the Sooners, Wow, um, you, you talk about an emotional win, a hard-fought physical win against a terrific team. Defensively, they came with it, holding Ohio State to just one touchdown and no touchdowns through the air. And offensively, really looking good, especially in the second half with four second-half TDs. And Baker Mayfield, a big reason why. And, of course, you probably have heard, unless you've been in a cave since Saturday night's upset win, about the celebration that Baker displayed after the game. You know, carrying the flag, that's one thing, and then running to midfield and then trying to stick that flag on the Ohio State O, in other words, on the 50-yard line, which, of course, got him some national criticism, especially from Chris Fowler and Kirk Kerbstreet, who were calling the game for ABC. I think it's a very overblown topic, okay? And I have felt this way since it happened. You know, was it necessary for Baker to do that? No, he's apologized for it. And look, these are emotional players, and I've never seen a player – that psychs himself up and gets ready for a game mentally and emotionally like Baker Mayfield does. And to me, if you take away the emotional aspect of Baker Mayfield, you take away part of Baker Mayfield, and he's not the same quarterback. You know, there are some players out there who use emotion, and there are some players out there who just are emotional and fired up and could run through a wall or at least try. Baker Mayfield is one of those guys, and other players feed off that. So there's no, there's no question that if you ask Baker to tone it down or don't do this, don't do that. You're taking away part of him. I do think, as silly as this might sound, that that compromises the offense a bit because, again, he's the leader of the team, but he's also the heartbeat and emotion of Oklahoma. Yeah, so, you know, so the celebration, it, it was, as some people might put it, you know, unnecessary to do that at midfield. But like I said, these are, these are young adults being young adults, late teens, early 20s. That's the age bracket that these college football players are. And you're going to get that type of a reaction after a game, especially a game that was that big. So to me, I think it's an overblown thing. Let's move forward. And we're going to move forward to the injury department for the Sooners. And yes, uh, unfortunately, a game like this, yeah, it is physical. And there are some results from a game like this afterwards in which you see more than just bumps and bruises in the case of uh, Will Johnson. He had suffered some concussion issues against Ohio State, severe enough to where he's not going to play this week against Tulane, the um, defensive back. Uh, speaking of DBs, uh, Robert Barnes um, had a hamstring issue, game time decision coming up against Tulane this Saturday. Um, there's not going to be Cody Ford either, um, the offensive lineman, undisclosed injury. Um, but some good news, though, for the Sooners, um, it looks like Mark Andrews uh, will be available for this Saturday's game. You might remember the OU tied in with the knee injury early, had to get that thing iced, never returned in the game. And, of course, throughout the game, besides worrying if Oklahoma was going to win, I'm thinking, is Mark Andrews going to be okay? Is this a long-term injury? Thank goodness it does not appear to be the case. And um, even if uh, Mark Andrews does not play on Saturday, um, you still have Grant uh, Calcaterra, um, who would be available. So I expect both tight ends to play, though. Andrews may not play a whole lot, but I do think he'll see some action on Saturday. And speaking of um, the Sooners, talking about defensive backs, and we mentioned that uh, Will Johnson's not playing and Robert Barnes is iffy. Um, at the safety position, you can go Chance Sylvie, or you can use the nickelback and Khalil Hogden. So 
the Sooners um, still have some playing experience as far as that backup position, aside from Stephen Parker at the safeties. Now, talking about the game itself this Saturday against Tulane, what can you expect? Now, Tulane, uh, just a little background information on them. They haven't had a winning season since the early 2000s. It's been a long time. Now, this year, off to a one-on-one start, beating Grambling, an FCS squad two weeks ago, but went to Navy last week against a team that, just like Tulane, Navy loves to primarily run the football. It was a close game. Um, Tulane, I think, had a defensive fumble return for a touchdown in the contest, um, but offensively really didn't do a whole lot. In fact, their starting quarterback, Jonathan Banks, who – was a Kansas State Wildcat two years ago, but redshirted and went to a junior college last year and then now as a part of the Green Wave, got knocked out of that game against Navy to make room for another Jonathan at quarterback, and that's Jonathan Brantley. Um, from what I've been trying to gather, there still hasn't been a decision yet if Jonathan Banks is going to play. But again, they've got Jonathan Brantley to rely on. So they do have a couple of quarterbacks with some playing experience to go with against the Sooners. So when the Sooners on defense... What can OU expect against Tulane? Well, Tulane runs an offense that you rarely see, okay? I know Georgia Tech runs it. It's called the triple option attack, primarily a running type offense where the quarterback can keep it or, you know, he can hand it off or he can pitch it to um, to a teammate who might be swinging uh, right behind him. Um, but unlike Georgia Tech's triple option, Tulane runs the triple option out of the shotgun formation. Um Kenneth Murray, I give it up to him. Played a terrific game last week. Just his second start against Ohio State. Had five tackles in the game. He was involved and he was able to put pressure on the QB. I do think that Tulane will try to attack Oklahoma in between the tackles and sometimes in between the guards. In other words, down the center. They're going to try to get their yardage over the middle. I really believe that. So, Kenneth Murray, pressure is going to be on you because I do think Tulane will be coming right after him. Um, the big thing about Tulane's offense is it is ball control. They don't mind taking up a lot of time off the off the game clock, the play clock, in order to try to keep Oklahoma's offense on the sideline as much as possible. A game like this, you're going to give up some yardage. You just can't give up those big chunks of yardage against a team like Tulane. And again, because they run that triple option attack, you know, you, you just never know what you're going to get. So being disciplined will be the big thing for this Sooner defense, especially for that front seven. So really watch for that. Um, you know, Tulane, like I said, primarily will get their yards on the ground. Doesn't mean that they won't throw the ball, but they're, again, not known as a throwing team. And one advantage that the Sooners, I think, will have in this game, as long as they can get off to a real good start on that scoreboard, triple option is not a good come-from-behind offense just because you're so limited as far as the passing attack. There's not really a lot of passing plays you can run out of the uh, triple option from the shotgun formation. I just, I just don't see that being the case. Um, defensively, the strength of Tulane right now would appear to be their secondary. Um, over their last 10 games, if you go back to last year, the Green Wave have had at least one interception in eight of their last 10 contests. I still think Baker Mayfield will challenge that Tulane secondary, but I think this is a game where it's going to be running back by committee, kind of like that first game we saw against uh, UTEP. I think it'll be more running than what you saw in the previous two games. I mean, so look for Trey Sermon um, to get his share of carries. And again, you look for Rodney Anderson to be in the mix too. And I do think Abdul Adams will see some action too, even though he had that fumble and we never saw him back in the game early on against Ohio State. Remember, he had that first quarter fumble and then it was Trey Sermon and it was Trey Sermon and we did not see Marcellius Sutton in the game either. But I do think you'll see Sutton. I think you'll see all four running backs get quality time. And, again, Baker Mayfield will throw. But in a game like this, um, it would appear to be that the Tulane front seven isn't as good as their secondary. So expect Oklahoma to do their best to run down the throat of Tulane. And the big thing, too, turnovers. All right? Had those two turnovers against Ohio State. One way that you increase an underdog's confidence is by turning the ball over. So especially – ball security, not fumbling the football. I mean, Baker Mayfield's been accurate, okay? He's been very accurate, doesn't throw an interception, like I said. Big thing that worries me about a game like this is ball security, especially the running game. Final thoughts on this game. The point spread is right now at 34 points. I know OU's at home. I know they're the number two team in the country, but because of the style of play of Tulane, where I think they will be deliberate as far as that clock it wouldn't surprise me at all if OU does not hang half a hundred in this game. In fact, I think they're going to score 
I'm going to say they're going to score 42 points, but I think Tulane's going to get 10. So I'm going to go 42-10. That's my final score. Oklahoma will win this game, and they'll win it easily. But they may not set scoring records in a matchup like this, but that's okay. Big thing by a game like this, again, ball security, and hopefully nobody gets hurt. you got the Big 12 opener coming up next week at Waco against Baylor. So we'll see if the Sooners can enter conference play with a perfect 3-0 record. That shouldn't really be a question. But, again, Tulane runs that kind of offense that you know, the Sooners will have to be uh, very, very disciplined because you don't see that triple option attack too often on your schedule, and sometimes you don't see it at all. Uh, just a reminder that I will have my national show called My Three Picks. Me and the coin will pick, will, uh, pick three games against the spread. My post game, by the way, for OU Tulane will not be until Sunday. Okay, so keep that in mind if you're waiting for my post game um, on Saturday once the game's over. It will not be until Sunday. So I want to get that point across so that way if you don't see my post game show until sometime Sunday, you're not surprised. I've got the Sooners winning 42-10. Boomer Center.